ZBrush is most commonly associated with soft surface uh, sculpting, character creation or stylized asset creation. But there is a pipeline that allows you to use it on precise hard surface objects such as guns or tools or other stuff which uh, specifically takes out sharp edges that you cannot modify normally with topology and bevels them up for you so you don't have to do it by hand it's a fast way to make your high polys and improve your already existing high polys let's talk about the use cases of this um, technique well, yeah, first of all, it takes this very dirty mesh made with creases and subdivision and smooths it up, uh, also booleans over here, and creates this nice bevel. Another use of uh, ZBrush is that the booleans inside it are perfect. Sometimes in Maya or Blender you might try to apply booleans and they don't really work, so you need to wiggle them around a little bit for them to work. It's very annoying and I would rather not waste my time with that so I can just import them into ZBrush and they will, uh, the programmer will do it for me. And also, sometimes you might have some pinching on your high poly, maybe because of your topology and it will take way too long to fix it. You don't want to be buffered with that. So you just import it into ZBrush, use a little bit of the smoothing uh, brush and it will become perfect. And let's talk about the limitations. First of all, this cylinder looks perfect, but it's shaded smooth. ZBrush doesn't care about vertex shading. In reality, it just looks like this. So it's just a bunch of end guns everywhere. And if you're going to import this thing into ZBrush, you're going to get this because it doesn't like end guns at all. Here, uh, we were lucky to get anything at all. It created some quads over here, but it also deleted those triangles. So when we export something to ZBrush, we need to make sure that it has a triangulation modifier applied. Also, another problem of uh, this workflow is that you need to work in really high poly because if you're going to use optimized cylinders, it's going to import like some sort of polygonal cylinder and bevel every single edge and I don't think we really want to get this result. We would rather apply a bunch of uh, points and uh, have it smoothed out like this properly. And another issue is that sometimes uh, small details like this get lost in the remesher of ZBrush. So you might want to apply stuff like this at the end. For example, I have this gun here. I need to have a ring on top. I would first um, smooth it out fully and at the end when I'm done I would apply this cutter over here. Okay, so we can start with a test. I already exported my assets but I basically chose those three things that I use for my main shape of the gun. I exported them and I'm going to import them in ZBrush. It's gonna look a little bit different from yours, but don't worry about that, it's just a skin. I also have a custom UI, which I will not use, but I will show how to create it at the end. You can basically put your entire workflow on this, so you don't have to worry about it later. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, it's a weird uh, key set to zoom in and, or, or out, so I would suggest going to document over here, control alt click on in, and zoom in, control alt click on out and zoom out. So your key bindings for zoom in and out would be your scroll wheel. And then we need to import something in the upper right corner, import. ZBrush was initially created as a tool for uh, painting or something 2.5D using 3D models as brushes for whatever you want to do. So if you just drag your mouse around it will create a bunch of these. We don't want this. So in order to clean our canvas just press Ctrl N. So I uh, just want to put one of them and then click on edit up there. The movement is with uh, right click for rotation and alt right click for panning around. The movement is a bit weird because right now we are rotating on all axes but we only want to rotate on the y axis like 
we do um, in Blender or Maya or other 3D software. So click on this and now you will only rotate like this, but still the weird rotation is uh, in place. So we want to reset it by clicking on this human face and dragging it around. Now the rotation will be perfect. So in order to see our objects, we want to go to sub tool over here, take this main shape and move it up a little bit by pressing on this button. It's the first one and we want to use the other two ones to cut. So you would press this instead of this, this is add, this is cut, this is intersect. And we don't see anything changing. That's because we haven't pressed the live boolean thing. This is a preview of the boolean that you have so you can see it before you actually apply it. To apply it, if we press shift F, we can see our topology and we will see that it's not applied. To apply it, we go to boolean over here and click on make boolean mesh and it will create this mesh over here that if we click on it we see it shift f yes it's applied but it has different polygroups and they will uh, not uh, really allow us to smoothen out as we want so we want to reset the uh, polygroups to all being the same one we can do it by scrolling down polygroups and either clicking on auto groups or just clicking on Control w while in the viewport now we just need some more topology to be able to bevel it up right now it's just a bunch of triangles everywhere so we can do that by remeshing go to geometry to dynamesh increase it to something like two or three thousand depending on your object you might want to start with a lower uh, resolution just so you can get used with it and not wait half an hour for it to compute I will uh, click on Dynamesh here and now we have a bunch of topology but I think it's not quite enough for what I want on this asset so I will control Z and instead of 2400 I will do 3200. Now that we have enough topology in our model we want to use the tool that automatically bevels up edges that is in deformation and most of the time I just use polish by features and polish by crisp edges. Usually you get the best result by turning off that circle next to them. So you just get that thing and you drag it a few times. Like you see the number over there about 10 times. And now it's beveled up nicely. The place where I use polish by crisp edges is usually on projects like this one. Sometimes you have uh, sharp edges like this and polish by features will just make some pinching. If there are not many of them, I still recommend keeping the polish by features in your workflow, but smoothing them out with shift. But because this is so repetitive, it would be so much that I would just use uh, polish crisp edges instead. And it still creates a good result. It's up to personal preference. Now that we created all of this nice looking object, we might want to export it, but it's too heavy. If you look at the topology, it has a lot of polygons. So we want to uh, clean up this stuff that is too dense, which we can do by going to Z plugin. You have decimation master. First, you need to pre-process. It will take the most time, like usually from half a minute to a few minutes. Now that the decimation is done, you go back to Z plugin to decimation master. You can either say how many thousand polygons you want, or you can put a percentage of what you already have. So let's say 6.9%. Just press decimate current. And if we look in shift F, it cleared up a lot of topology that doesn't really influence the shading at all. And now it will be way lighter to import in the baking software that we want. But one mistake that I made very often that I don't want you to make is that I exported by this thing. Never export by this thing. It will export an OBJ that is a hundred times bigger than what you imported with broken vertex normals here and there. What you want to use is go to Z plugin to FBX export import and uh, select your up axis 
By default it's Maya Y up, but Blender has the Z axis as the up axis, so I changed it there, so I don't have to rotate it in my software. And then I press export here, save. Mm -hmm. This is our gun smooth as uh, in ZBrush we can already name it uh, object high and create a low poly object low import in either substance or marmoset if you want to improve your workflow you might want to create a little bar below so to do that you go to preferences config you enable customize then you can uh, drag any button that you see anywhere, for example, the new folder in the subtool. Control Alt Drag. And now it's here. And in order to save this thing for the next time you open ZBrush, you need to go and store configuration. And when you're done, also disable the customization so you don't have the wasted space. Hope it helped. Good luck.